Hi everybody, my name is Anusha Jayaram and I'm a third year medical student at the Tufts University School of Medicine in Boston. I'm also one of the current national coaches for the Global Surgery Student Alliance. A little bit about me. I'm interested in pursuing a career in general surgery and following the end of my third year, starting in July, I'll be starting a year as a research associate at the Program for Global Surgery and Social Change. Hi everyone, I'm Parissa Fala. I'm a fourth year medical student at Harvard applying into OBGYN. Um, I helped found GSSA back in 2017 and up until recently was one of the national co-chairs. Anusha and I are both very excited to speak to you guys today about the importance of students and trainees in global surgery and how they can get involved in the field. So before we get started, really want to talk about the background of the field of global surgery and really how it came to be in the most recent years. Uh, prior to 2015, the focus within the field of global surgery was more on mission-based work um, in which surgical providers traveled to different parts of the world to provide clinical care. Um, in 2015, that all changed. The Lancet Commission and Global Surgery came out and this helped shift our focus to capacity building, policy, workforce, collaboration, and more, essentially working with governments in low and low income countries to change the landscape of surgical care in countries all around the world. And to learn more about the Lancet Commission, you can actually watch Dr. Mira's lecture um, within our curriculum series. So while this shift changed the global surgery world academically and professionally, there was still a lot left to do to help engage students and trainees who are really passionate about the field of global surgery and are actively looking for ways to get involved. But global surgery still remains an underrepresented component of medical education and surgical training. It's really important that we build infrastructure to help improve our understanding of this field, to guide career development, and increase opportunities for trainees to get involved in global surgery. So Going off of what Parissa has said, how are students and trainees working within the field of global surgery nowadays? Like Parissa talked about, global surgery largely worked off a mission trip model in the past, but more and more students and trainees are recognizing that they're going to be moving away from the clinical mission work and healthcare providing model by going abroad and actually providing healthcare. We're realizing more and more that there's a decrease in providing this clinical care because there's a greater understanding that students aren't always appropriately trained to be providing such clinical care or especially surgical care in environments just simply because there's less oversight over them. Surgery especially and OBGYN care and anesthesia work all take years and years of professional training in order to become proficient in those specialties. And therefore, medical students who've only had a couple years of preclinical and maybe a few months of clinical work really shouldn't be engaging in providing high-level clinical care in these settings. And so it's really great to see students engaging more and more and wanting to have an equitable and ethical background uh, to the work that they want to engage in. And so we understand, though, that many students and trainees were introduced to global health through these mission trip models. And so what we think that students and trainees should be doing is acknowledging that that was something that they had the opportunity to do in college, and maybe even in high school if they had parents who were in the healthcare field already. And nowadays, commit to moving forward in a more ethical and equitable practice um, for all of the work that they do do as a student moving forward. And so how do they do that? A lot of students are engaging in really great research and advocacy work that they can oftentimes do right here at home at their home institutions without needing to go abroad. And so students are engaging especially more and more in bi-directional work with partners on the ground in the communities they want to work with because they're realizing that there's not just a one-way flow of information. It's not just that students and trainees in low and middle income countries can learn a lot from us, it's that we can learn a lot from them. And so students are really truly pushing forward this agenda to work in these bi-directional partnerships where there is equity and ethics involved at every stage of the process. And so this is actually not just leading to the formation of long-term professional relationships, but students are really finding that they're gonna have lifelong friends in this process, uh, which is really fulfilling to be a part of. Um, more for ethical considerations, you're more than welcome to go and watch Dr. O's lecture. He's put together a fantastic lecture on this series about global surgery education, and we really encourage students to be uh, thinking about how they can go about their global surgery work in this new model uh, that really takes equity uh, into strong consideration. So now that we've touched on um, the ways that students and trainees are starting to engage in global surgery, um, it's important to talk about the organizations that are coming into place to help unify these efforts and address this gap in global surgery education. It's really, really important to talk about one major organization called the International Student Surgical Network, or Incision, as you may know. Um, they have formed a network of students, trainees, and young physicians all around the world with national working groups in over 40 countries. Um, they've organized ways in which for all of us to communicate. Um, they've 
created large-scale advocacy efforts on social media. Um, they're working actively to bring educational materials to students in low-middle-income countries and high-income countries around the world, and they're engaging in large-scale international projects as well. GSSA, or the Global Surgery Student Alliance, as many of you may know, serves as the U.S. national working group within Incision. We now have chapters at over 60 U.S. medical schools um, and undergrad institutions across the country. Our main vision is to educate, inspire, and unify students and trainees through engagement and mentorship in global surgery. This includes anesthesia and OBGYN, as well as allied health professionals in the field. Um, GSSA works at many levels, um, at the local levels with our different chapters, but then also at the national level, working on projects in advocacy, education, research, and more, which we will talk about in just a moment. Um, this lecture, as we want to mention, will actually focus specifically on the needs of U.S. medical students, as we cannot speak to the needs of our um, friends and colleagues that live and work in LMICs. Now, Anusha is going to talk about the different resources that GSSA and other organizations all around the world provide to help students and trainees learn more about the field. So one of the major ways that students are involved in global surgery work is through research efforts. So there's been an incredibly large movement towards research that addresses capacity building and that's carried out in a way that really uses bi-directional partnerships to ensure that folks who need to be at the table are invited to the table from the very beginning of project planning. Global surgery work has commonly been viewed as only being able to be conducted abroad, and more and more students are realizing and committing to global surgery work that it can actually be done from their home institutions without the need to go abroad and to stay abroad. And so GSSA understands that a lot of students feel lost when it comes to first getting involved in research in global surgery. It can be very challenging to start from nowhere. And so what we have done is provided a research toolkit that'll help guide students in the US in starting out in global surgery. The research toolkit can be found on our website and addresses things like finding a mentor, coming up with a question that is addressable and on a topic that students are interested in, and also finding partners in low and middle income countries to work with to once again ensure that bi-directional partnerships and research is equitable from the beginning of the research that a student is engaging in and something that they can carry on for the rest of their career. As well, students sometimes want a more formal or time-intensive program to commit to global surgery work. So we also have an ever-growing list of research fellowships and master's programs that are available around the world to further how students can critically look at systems and use frameworks and evidence-based methods to conduct research. Um, and so this really allows students to either find ways to go about doing uh, global surgery research at their own institutions or with solitary faculty members or in larger groups and spaces. Another way students are really involved in global surgery work is through advocacy work. Students are realizing more and more that to work within the global health field, they can't just be practitioners, but they also have to be advocates for the causes they care about. And one of the major causes that students are really rallying around is universal health care. And so this is seen not just in the United States, but internationally, that students are advocating that everyone has the right to health care. This is done through policy work, perhaps at the UN General Assembly, or through a medium through which our generation is a little bit more familiar with social media. Students are quite the force on social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, advocating not just to existing faculty in the field, but also to their classmates and other up and coming medical students and even undergrads who are interested in global surgery work, that they should be invested in these causes. Students participate in social media and at their own home institutions in campaigns such as World Trauma Day, World Anesthesia Day, and also the newer Global Surgery Day, really trying to bring more and more of an eye to the fact that global surgery work is incredibly important. There's also some other really cool initiatives such as gender equity in global surgery, which is something that students have really rallied around. Students are also really advocating for some really cool initiatives in global surgery that are incredibly pertinent to today, such as the gender equity initiative in global surgery. Additionally, students are also at the helm of advocating for ensuring that all the partnerships that we're talking about are incredibly equitable. Last but not least, a really important component of student involvement in global surgery is how students can learn more about the field. Um, and that's how they can get more involved in advocacy work and research projects. We would be remiss not to talk about one of the most important venues in which students can learn more, conferences. There are so many different conferences happening across the country and around the world where students and trainees can engage with faculty, mentors, and learn from their own peers. Um, 
I want to go through a couple of the conferences that do happen across the country and around the world. There's the American College of Surgeons Clinical Congress, the Academic Surgical Congress, the Bethune Roundtable, which is an amazing conference held in Canada each year, and the Consortium for University and Global Health. These are all some major venues where global surgery is actively being addressed. In addition, GSSA actually hosts our own national symposium every single year. Um, and that is held for students all across the United States. And then Incision hosts their international symposium on a yearly basis as well, bringing in students, trainees, and young physicians all around the world. Incredibly exciting events geared towards you um, and for you to learn more about the field and meet your own colleagues. Other ways in which you can learn more about global surgery include webinars and podcasts. So GSSA has our own webinar, which we've been hosting for a couple of months um, and will be held on a monthly basis. There's also organizations like the Resident Associate Society um, within the American College of Surgeons, as well as Incision UK and others who are hosting webinars and podcasts and other online opportunities to learn more about the field in short, brief ways. It's really, really important that if you're interested in global surgery, you try to read and learn more about the field. So journal articles and books are really important ways to understand how the field of global surgery is actively changing, who some of the major players are, and honestly, what kind of research you can start participating in. If you go on Twitter, like Anusha mentioned, you'll actually learn more about new articles that are coming out on a daily basis, and you'll be able to keep up with the direction in which the field is going. And then finally, if you do go to a school that has global surgery opportunities, we really recommend you go to those research meetings. That's where you can actively engage in the local environment at your school, where you can start to really get involved in research projects and build mentorship relationships that will last you a lifetime. So Pris had just mentioned what you can do if there are global surgery faculty at your school. But what if you are at an institution where there isn't a strong global surgery faculty or even any global surgery faculty? This is in fact the case for most students at US medical institutions. And so this is something that we really try to address. At GSSA, one of the tools that we've come up with to try and help connect students better with other residents and faculty who are interested and in pursuing global surgery research and advocacy work is our database. Our database is free to use and can be accessed on our website and has profiles of almost 200 faculty, residents, and medical students who are all doing global surgery work. It has some of their interests, some of their ongoing projects, and ways to connect with them via email. So we really, really encourage students to use that database to connect with people who have similar research interests to their own. We say this because global surgery faculty are incredibly warm and welcoming and aren't just interested in working with students at their own institution. So truly reaching out to these faculty who are, might be states and states away would be worth it in order to find the way in which you can get interested and connected into the global surgery world in a more formalized setting. Another thing that we do at GSSA is also try to increase access to our online resources. Things that Paris has already mentioned, such as the webinars and podcasts, remove the geographical boundaries that attending a lecture in person otherwise would enlist on a student. And so we really, really try to make sure that things are recorded if they are in person so that they're available later on for students to watch at their own time. We know that students are in clinical rotations and have exams, and so sometimes you can't, you can't always participate in formal lecture series when they're happening. And so we really try to play to this um, and ensure that students are supported and able to engage with global surgery resources at their own time. Finally, the power of students. You might not have faculty at your school that are currently pursuing a global surgery research or advocacy agenda. However, we have found at GSSA that there are so many students that are interested in pursuing global health work and ensuring that no one in the world doesn't have access to safe surgery. And so rallying together and getting students interested in the topic and hosting events such as the hackathon really showed administrations at your school that that is something that students are extremely interested in and something that they should be putting in their formal preclinical or clinical curriculum uh, to educate students further about global surgery work as it's more and more an important topic that's getting paid attention to. So as Anusha mentioned, the majority of students and trainees attend institutions that don't have faculty mentors directly there. And so I want to take a moment to talk directly to those mentors who might be watching this video right now. Um, if you are a resident or a faculty member and you identify a student who is interested in global surgery, try to meet with them. And if you can't meet with them, try to connect them with someone who will. Invite them to your research meetings. Help them engage in the research projects that you're working on. Um, offer to give lectures to the students who are in new incoming classes so they can learn more about the field. Consider creating a formal course at your institution and push for global surgery to be prioritized as an important part of the education there. 
It's important to also help advise and encourage the development of global surgery student groups at your school, whether that's a GSSA chapter or if you're from a different country, um, the development of a national working group as a part of the incision network. We recognize that faculty's time is really limited and we greatly appreciate the work that you do to help students stay involved. And if you don't have time, it's always helpful to a student to know who who you know that might have time to help them get involved. We want to take a final moment to talk about why students and trainees are so critical to the field of global surgery. What we have been able to do is create international organization with national leadership and local championship of global surgery work. We've truly been able to achieve unity among students and trainees in a way that is unprecedented in other fields. We have to continue working together within the field of global surgery, as this is a team effort. We as students and trainees need to be thoughtful, purposeful, and effective in our efforts to support the development of academic global surgery environments at our institutions and to advance the field in a really meaningful way. We invite you to think about how incredible it's going to be when these networks that we've developed as students and trainees are actually turned into networks of surgeons and physicians, anesthesiologists, OBGYNs, and colleagues all around the world who are working together to advance surgical care worldwide. Finally, we are always willing to hear from you. You can always reach out to us across our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And of course, you can always email us at the Global Surgery Students email. We are constantly looking for ways in which we can better equip students to engage in global surgery work, whether it's through online tools or in-person conferences. So if there's something that you think that we can do that will help you out or something that we should be doing that should change, please, please, please do let us know. This is our passion and our commitment, and we hope that going forward, GSSA is able to do its best to engage U.S. medical students and trainees to engage in meaningful, equitable, and ethical global surgery work.